Okay, this project is to replace the rear seal on a Borgwana velvet drive transmission, the seal on the output shaft. And I couldn't find much information online that was very helpful to do this, so I asked a few people uh, for any tips, and this is what I've started to do. Now you'll see this steel bar that goes down into the uh, bilge below the engine and the purpose of that is to hold the uh, coupling from turning as I try to undo that big nut in the center of the uh, flange. And the nuts are put on with 125 to 200 uh, PSI with, <clears throat> with a torque wrench so they're on there really tight and you really need something rugged uh, to keep that flange from moving. I tried a piece of uh, aluminum channel iron first, but that just started to crumble. So now I've got this quarter inch, uh, quarter by two uh, piece of steel that I've drilled out uh, to match the holes in the flange. I notched it out uh, for the shape of the bilge under the uh, transmission. And with that, I was able to finally get the nut loose. It wasn't easy. I used my half-inch breaker bar, and I had bought uh, an inch and 11 sixteenths inch socket. You can see there. I bought that on Amazon. Uh, you can buy a single one. They called it a, a Dodge... Uh, uh, Dodge spindle socket, I think, but it's an inch and eleven sixteenths. It's a half inch drive, and okay. So the next part of this operation, changing the seal on the output shaft of this Borgwana velvet drive marine transmission, is to pull the flange back. And I was lucky to be able to just grab that with my hands and pull hard, and you can see where. It started to slide back there. So I'll slide it back the rest of the way and pull it right off of that shaft. You can see that that's the shaft. It goes on a spline shaft into the transmission and I'll pull that off so I can access the seal. So we're in the middle of disassembling this uh, coupling and the, to get at the Rear seal on this Borgwana Velvet Drive uh, Marine Transmission. And I have the uh, coupling starting to come out. All I did was take my uh, both hands, put my thumb on the shaft, and pull hard, and the uh, coupling came out and uh, came all the way off uh, doing that. So you can see the uh, old seal still in the uh, hub of the transmission. You can see the output shaft and the splines. You see all the old silicone still on the splines and the fluid leaking out. So this is now ready to uh, pull the old seal out and clean up those splines. Okay, so after I got the seal out, you can see the seal there, uh, I just pried it out with a screwdriver. It didn't come out too easily. I put a screwdriver in one side and against the seal on the other side and just pried slowly and it finally came out. So then, okay, so I got the old seal out. I basically went behind it with the screwdriver and pushed on the other side of it and popped it out. So that wasn't too bad. Took a little pressure. Just had to work at it slow and it came out. So then I cleaned up the splines uh, on the shaft. They had a lot of the old black silicone on them. I used this uh, cork remover and this doesn't actually dissolve the silicone it just loosens the bond between the silicone and uh, whatever it's attached to. And so it seemed to do that pretty well. You let it set for a few minutes. 
And then I had this really handy tool. I looked in the hardware store for the right tool to get into those splines to uh, pull the silicone out, and I didn't find it, but at home, on my bureau, I happened to realize that I had this old-fashioned uh, beer can opener. Some of you may not know what that is, but that's what it was before the uh, pull tab days. And so that fit right into the splines. It had a nice angle on it so, so that I could get in there. And so after I uh, softened up and got the silicone released with the uh, silicone remover, I just had to pull at it with this. It took a bit of work because uh, you know how silicone sticks to uh, things in a little tiny place and you just get a flap of it that won't let go. Then I used my little soft bristle brush and cleaned it up the rest of the way. So I think I'm in pretty good shape uh, as far as having the, the splines cleaned up. Now I got a little bit concerned uh, when I realized that the uh, the shaft had quite a bit of play in it when I uh, first started cleaning up the, the splines. Then I realized that it, it's the coupling that actually pushes the bearing into the bearing race. So. Uh, the bearing was actually loose. I could take and push it in a little bit, but it'll take, uh, the coupling has to go back on to pull that bearing in tight and that'll firm everything up. So now I'm going to take my new seal and I'm going to spread some uh, Loctite medium strength on the outer rim of it and push it back in. <coughs> I bought a a PVC pipe coupling, a 3 inch adapter, a schedule 40 to soil pipe, and that looks like it's about the right size that I'll be able to set that seal in there and put a block of wood across the uh, pipe fitting and tap on it a little bit to get it started and seated in where it's supposed to go there and a little bit of Loctite will both seal it and help to hold it in there. After that, I'll uh, put the coupling back on. I'll put some silicone. Again, I'm going to use uh, the uh, Permatex gasket maker, the silicone gasket maker. I'm going to put that on the splines and then push the uh, the coupling on and put the big nut back on. So I'll be doing that shortly. So this transmission has been rebuilt and you can see this what they call a speed sleeve uh, that's put on to uh, take up for any wear on the uh, surface, the riding surface of the coupling. So that's the way you can see that black line and then the silver line, that's a very thin uh, repair sleeve that they've put on uh, just to give that a little better fit in the seal. And there you can see uh, the coupling with the uh, the uh, transmission with the coupling removed. The, the seal is still in there and I'm going to clean up that shaft. They're put together uh, with silicone on the splines of the shaft because these transmissions tend to leak around the splines on the shaft. The seal uh, only seals the outside of the coupling, but the oil can follow the splines down. doesn't seem like a very good engineering design, but that's the way it is, and uh, they do work. And Okay, so I put the medium strength Loctite on the outside rim of the seal. I pushed the seal in so it was fully seated in the housing. And then I put uh, the RTV silicone gasket maker, the Permatex, on the splines of the shaft and on the splines of the coupling and around uh, the inside face of the washer on the big nut that holds the shaft against the coupling and tightens up the bearing. 
So now I'm in the process of tightening up the uh, nut on the coupling. I've gotten it up to 150 pounds of torque with my torque wrench. That's as high as my torque wrench goes. It's supposed to be torqued to 200 or 220 uh, PSI. So I've now got uh, my length of three inch pipe on the wrench. I'm going to put it on the breaker bar. I've got it on a torque wrench, but I don't think that's a good idea, so I'm going to uh, take that off and put it on the breaker bar. You can see there my inch and 11 16th socket that I bought uh, for this job, and now I'll take that down and uh, put the socket on my breaker bar to give it a little extra torque. Okay, now I've talked it down good, and you'll notice I had the steel bar that I made uh, I had on the other side of the coupling when I undid it. This time I turned it around and put it on the side so that it would hold the uh, flange in place while I tighten the nut. You need something pretty rugged to hold against all that uh, torque. Well, that's it. I've got it all bolted back together. Got the new seal in, bolted the flange and the flange, the coupling flange back into the transmission, pulled the two flanges together, lined them up, made sure they were still aligned properly, and tightened down those bolts and that should be it. Now don't don't forget if you're gonna tackle a job like this, you wanna put some absorbent pads under the transmission and some kind of a container because you are going to get some leakage and you're going to want to to make some either make some tools or find some tools you're going to need that bar to uh, keep the flange from turning while you undo that big flange nut and you're going to need something to scrape the old silicone out of the uh, splines on the shaft and in the coupling and I find the old beer can opener worked just great for that. So that's it I guess. We'll uh, let it sit for 24 hours, let all the Loctite and the silicone just sit there and set up before we put the transmission fluid in and then we'll fill it up and uh, give it a try. It was successful, and this engine now has uh, about 25 hours since I did my repair on the seal, and no leaks.